Ryan's opinion. Today I am reviewing the new Broadway musical Lempica with book, lyrics, and original concept by Carson Kreitzer, book and music by Matt Gould, directed by Rachel Chapkin, and choreographed by Raja Feather Kelly, running at Longacre Theater at 220 West 48th Street in New York City. Being a patron of the show isn't exactly being a patron of the arts, but it's essentially next door. So come and visit my Patreon page, where for you as little as $1 a month can support the work I do here, along with my classic movie podcast, Yesterday's Matinee. I am currently featuring old reviews and interviews that I did when I was writing for a local newspaper here in Connecticut. The link is in the description. Loosely based on the life of Art Deco artist Tamara Delimpica, whose style had a very mechanical quality, I was uh, immediately impressed with Rachel Chapkin and scenic designer Ricardo Hernandez's vision for the production. It has strikingly sleek industrial lines in a set. It's not always straight lines, but where curves are incorporated, it is accented with lighting by Bradley King that maintained the industrial mechanical nature of the show. A few scenes in, the plot moves from St. Petersburg, where Lempica, played by Eden Espinosa, and her husband, Tadius Lempiki, played by Andrew Samansky, flee from the Russian Revolution to Paris, where elements of the Eiffel Tower descend into the set, compounding the modernist bent of the of the production. The whole design is gorgeous and eye-popping. Paloma Young's costumes are also fantastic with refined concepts for the Russian Eastern European pre-Russian Revolution aristocracy, and then silky sensuality with the liberated bohemian world of early 20th century Paris. The choreography as well has a very mechanical, almost robotic quality about it, which at first you're kind of like, eh, what are they doing? But once you embrace the concept of the modernist movement, particularly the futurist movement, which plays a big role in this show, it all makes sense and it looks amazing. Matt Gould and Carson Kreitzer, both making their Broadway debut as composers and book writers for the musical, have crafted a score that also feels industrial in its rhythmic quality, but not necessarily its melodic and harmonic quality. It plays more to standard pop fare that most new musicals are embracing. It caused mixed feelings for me as the show begins with this aggressive sound that's almost an industrial sound, but doesn't really pay off with anything new or interesting melodically. One thing the melodies of the songs have is a challenging vocal line for Eden Espinosa, as it requires her to belt out lines at the peak of her belt range. This unfortunately brings her belt to the fringes where she pinches at the top notes, causing her tone to sound harsh and causing her to go flat by about a quarter tone. Which is a shame, because if it sounded better, the first act finale, Woman Is, could be the new defined gravity for vocalists to dare themselves to sing. I suppose it still can be, but I'd want to hear a better vocal performance of it. Tuning it down a whole step would make a world of difference in the quality of the song. It's just too bloody high. This takes nothing away from Espinosa's acting performance, which is great. She gives Tamara a rich emotional journey of self-discovery from losing the comforts of aristocratic life in pre-revolutionary Eastern Europe to destitute and selling herself to free her husband from prison to finding the fortitude to take care of her family as an artist in Paris. And that is only in the first half of the first act. She starts studying under renowned Italian artist, poet, philosopher, and founder of the futurist movement, Filippo Marinetti, played by Giorgia Bud. She also finds her muse and extramarital lover in Raffaella, a prostitute she meets at a bar, played by Amber Iman. Abud is amazing as the artistically and politically zealous Marinetti. He stalks around the stage like a wolf hunting the unsuspecting sheep of the bourgeoisie. Amber Iman is deliciously sultry as Raffaella, one part seductive and one part apathetic to the world that has abused her for so long that she uses it to her best, if selfish intent, filled with sex laced with fragile vulnerability. Unfortunately, the musical has the dreaded second act problem where conflicts feel rushed and a push for a resolution is done with the sacrifice of character motivation. This is most prominent by Tamara's daughter, Cazette, played by Zoe Glick, who essentially, out of nowhere, confronts Raffaella about what's going on between her and her mother. The whole situation is rushed, and it causes Cazette to come off a bit sociopathic in the scene, which doesn't offer much in sympathy for her side of the conflict. Her lack of involvement in the plot leading up to it makes it all feel forced to bring the show to its end. 
There is also the fascism subplot involving Marinetti, which also happens really fast and is needed to escalate the growing conflict between Tamara and Tadius as he wants to return to his homeland in Poland while she is concerned about the increasing anti-Jewish rhetoric as she is part Jewish. I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention the fantastic performances by Nathaniel Stampley and Beth Lievel, who play a baron and a baroness who are patrons for Tamara. Beth Lievel in particular has a fantastic song near the end of Act 2 where she expresses how important Tamara has been to her in her life and how important it is for her, uh, Tamara, to be there for the Baron as her health begins to fade. But what may make this whole review all meaningless to you is that most of what plot I've revealed for this musical about Tamara de Lempica is fictional. Tadius wasn't part of the aristocracy. He was a lawyer. He married more for her dowry than her for his wealth. There is no Raffaella. What is likely is that Raffaella is a composite of various people, both men and women she had affairs with. Susie Solidor, played with exceptionally ravenous glee by Natalie Joy Johnson, was a real person, and Tamara did have a sexual relationship with her. Tamara also didn't likely study under Marinetti, who is more there as a voice of the political function than for any historical accuracy. The ending is also different from reality to a degree. Some of it is true, other aspects not. At the risk of spoilers, I won't reveal what they are, but I do encourage you to check it out if you see the show. All that being said, I don't necessarily think the historical inaccuracies are all that terrible. I mean, media, including musicals, are replete with inaccuracies for the sake of dramatic interpretation. But if you have issues with it, I totally understand. My issues are more with the second act being a bit of a narrative mess and the vocals for Tamara. Lempica is a visual sight to be seen and is some of the best design I've seen all season. And it does shed a light on an artist that even hard historians I know don't know much about it. So if it reinvigorates some rediscovery to an artist that tends to get lost in the woodwork, I'll consider Lempica a win. But I'm only one man's opinion, so be sure to leave yours in the comments below. If you'd like to see Lempica, I'll leave a link where you can get tickets in the description. Also in the description will be a link to my Patreon page. You can also support my channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing, and click the notification bell to be alerted to future reviews. My next review will be the Broadway revival of The Wiz. Thank you for watching, and I will see you at the theater.